Hey everyone, welcome to you Fighting Over the Card Catalog, a snarky look back on young adult novels of the 80s and 90s. I'm Jess. And I'm Steven, and I'm here to make my wife happy. We're taking a journey to find out how many terrible, and hopefully some not so terrible books from my youth I can get my husband to read before he reconsiders this whole marriage. But now it's your youth. Because it's November. Uh, that's right. <laughs> Even my though first I read book. this one too. Did you? Yes. Yeah. So I was probably, I was probably like 10 or 11 when I read this one, I think. Which is how to eat fried worms. Yes. Yes. Just putting that out there. Yeah. But anyways, hey, we voted today. Yeah. Happy voting day. Happy, Happy voting day in the U.S. Yeah. And uh, what's the, the English thing? Remember, remember. Oh, yes. It's Guy Fox fifth, Day. It's Guy Fox, that's it. Yes. Guy Fox, not Sky Guy, Fox. Right. <laughs> that sounds Sky like... Sky Fox was a um, Nintendo game. Oh, yeah. yeah. It sounded like a James Bond movie to me. <laughs> <laughs> but that's Sky Fall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go ahead and get into the book, yeah? Sure. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. How to Eat Fried Worms by Thomas Rockwell, published in 1973. Tell us about it. Because of a bet, Billy is in the uncomfortable position of having to eat 15 worms in 15 days. The worms are readily supplied by his opponent, whose motto seems to be the bigger and juicier, the better. At first, Billy's problem is simply whether or not he can manage to swallow the worm that is placed ceremoniously before him despite the free choice of condiments, from peanut butter to horseradish. But later, it begins to look like Billy will win, and the challenge becomes whether or not Billy can get the worm in order to eat it. Billy's family, after checking with the doctor, takes everything in stride and even helps Billy through the gastronomic ordeal that twists and turns with each new day, leaving the outcome of the bet continually in doubt. No exclamation point at the end? No exclamation wow. point, man. <laughs> so, what, 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 what do you think on your adult reread? <laughs> um, yeah, I thought it was fun. Um, it reminded me a little bit of how a Christmas story is done. Where it just mm. kind of takes inner monologue and interactions between kids mm -hmm. and, like, takes it a little over the top. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was so good and so funny. And it's such a strange concept for a book. But uh -huh. it's, like, totally believable that it's yeah a thing kids would do. Uh, and, yeah, these are my favorite parents, aside from Anastasia's. They're... Yeah. Great. <laughs> I love them very much. So, on a scale of one being the best book ever to a Dementor's Kiss of Ten, sucking the soul from your love of reading, what do you give it? I give it a three. A three? Mm -hmm. I was going to say a two. Two? Two. Close. Yeah. I thought it was very funny. And I like the characters well, most of them very much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a part. So, I was listening to this on the way back from seeing my grandson for the first time. Mm -hmm. And there was a part that just had me laughing out loud to myself, giggling to myself. <laughs> so I've marked that place and I'll, oh, okay. Okay. I, I'll, I'll actually read that piece. Okay. All right. So since this is your book, you've got the synopsis for us, right? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so on the audio book, did it tell you every time it was starting a new chapter? It did. Is 116 pages and 31 chapters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, some of them were, like, a page. Yeah. As, yeah. as I was flipping through, I was like, man, wow, okay. I know. When it shows all the chapter titles, it's uh -huh. like, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> How involved is this book? But it's pretty involved. Um, okay. So let's start out with, with our main four boys. We've got Billy. Who is described as chunky, snub nosed, and freckled. Alan argued a lot, small, knobby kneed, nervous, gnaws at his thumbnail a lot, red hair, 
and generally pretty messy looking dude. Um, Tom is a tall, skinny boy who took his troubles very seriously. <laughs> and Joe, just a small boy with dark hair and a long nose and big brown eyes. Also, he's a sly, devious, a schemer. He's kind of a dick. <laughs> <laughs> So we open with three of them, Billy, Tom, and Alan, um, meeting up after a failed attempt to steal peaches from old man Tater's tree. Um, Joe's mom hasn't let him out yet because he wouldn't eat tuna casserole. <laughs> <laughs> so that leads to oh, no, the whole conversation of... of <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry. Billy saying, anybody can eat a bite of anything, right. basically. Yeah, Billy's like, I don't understand why I wouldn't just eat it. I mean, you know, like my mom says, can't you just eat two bites? You can do two bites. Yeah. You can do two bites of anything. Yeah. So, and he's like, it doesn't sound so bad anyway. And Alan's like, well, you wouldn't eat mud. But Billy's all like, <laughs> hell yeah, I would. It's just dirt. And <laughs> my dad says, everyone eats a pound of dirt a year. That sounded suspicious, so I looked it up. <laughs> and I found uh, how stuff works. Um, so, the dirt we consume, because we do, breaks down into two basic parts, soil and dust. And about 45% of the stuff we inhale or inadvertently eat is soil. And 55% is dust. That gross you out? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> okay. Does it say, give an hour? Does it one pound? Um, okay, well, the EPA numbers <laughs> on unintentional dirt consumption um, still focus on children. Um, babies from six weeks to a year generally get 60 milligrams. Uh, from one to 20, it goes up to 100 milligrams a day. <laughs> and 50 milligrams, for reference, is like one-sixth of an aspirin tablet. So, it's not that much. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like... Thinking of our ibuprofen, that's 200 milligrams. Right. So if you take those daily numbers and make them annual, that would be uh, 36,500 milligrams or 1.3 ounces a mm. year. So Billy's dad, your numbers uh, weren't quite right. Well, you know, maybe <laughs> back then they were really eating a lot more uh, vegetables straight off of the, out of the, you know. Out of the ground? <laughs> yeah, out of the <laughs> What's the word? Soil? The freaking farm. The the freaking farm? Garden. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> wow. Okay, yeah. The freaking farm. <laughs> the garden. Oh, but at the end of that article, they say, it's only natural. We're all made of dirt anyway, right? Mm. So, yeah, he'd agree with that bit. So, anyways, <laughs> um, Alan wonders where Billy would draw the line in regard to his appetite. And he says that he bets Billy would eat mud or even worms. And Billy's like, um, why not? Worms are just dirt. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like... Yeah, but they bleed, so you'd have to cook them. Cows bleed. And so Alan p offers to put money down on it. First they say 100 but then he decides $50. Um, which and at first he said like 100 for one, and then it goes yeah. 50 to 50, 50 for 15 One a day. One a day for 15 yeah. days. Um, so converted, that's $277. That's a lot of money mm. for a kid. Yeah. And he says he has 130 in the bank. Right. Which is $726 today. Nice. That's a lot. But then later on, he's talking about having to borrow it from his dad. Did I miss something in there? <laughs> yeah, I, I, th <laughs> I think it might be one of those things where he, you know. As has permission to, to get you, it. Yeah, you used to have the little passbooks. Right. Yeah. Or you wrote it down and then you would have like, um, like my account, one of my parents would have to be with me. Right. Yeah. You'd, and plus you'd have to go in anyway. 
<laughs> right. So I don't know if he was lying about how much money he had. But yeah, or if it was sense. that he would get, have to get the money from his dad and then his dad would have to get it from the... Right. Yeah. Right. That makes sense. <laughs> and he's like, Tom can be your second and Joel will be mine, just like in a duel. Did you start thinking ten dual commandments? Right no, but it? every time you hear dual, of course you. Oh yeah, you have you to hear think Hamilton. To that. <laughs> but the word dual now it absolutely just goes straight to right. ten dual commandments. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, and Billy takes him up on this challenge to eat fifteen worms in fifteen days. And here are the rules: regular worms, not big green ones, so like earthworms. Um. He can eat them anyway, boiled, stewed, fried, or fricasseed. Um, but Alan and Joe provide the worms, and at least one of them must witness it because somebody trustworthy needs to witness it. And he may use any sort of condiments. And Billy's like, hey, $50 would buy me this mini bike, which I assume is like motorized. Yeah, I'm assuming a little, a little. Yeah motorized bike so it's on like donkey kong (laughs) y'all uh the first day arrives and billy has to eat his first worm (laughs) look at the cover of the copy we have but look at the cover as i read this it's got like everything on there he'd Mm. set out bottles of ketchup and worcestershire i can't say that fucking worcestershire I thought it was Worcestershire. 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 Sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Jars of piccalilli and mustard, a box of crackers, salt and pepper shakers, a lemon, a slice of cheese, his mother's tin of cinnamon sugar, a box of Kleenex, a jar of maraschino cherries, some horseradish, and a plastic honey bear. Yeah, all those are on there except for the cheese. But I'll just pretend mm. it's back there somewhere. I'm like, this is a very detailed cover, and uh-huh. I really like it. And, like, the boys, it even gets into that. I mean, I think this is the cover of the book that I read yeah. originally. Yeah. It's a very good one. I love the font on it. It's very 70s. Uh, yes. <laughs> so, okay, they crack me up here. Um Alan marched in, carrying a covered silver platter in both hands, Joe slouching along beside him with a napkin over one arm, nodding and smiling obsequiously. Tom dragged another orange crate over besides the first. Alan set the silver platter on it. A chair, cried Alan. A chair for the monsieur. Ladies and gentlemen, shouted Alan, I present my masterpiece. Verm a la mud. I just love them and their sense of theatricality so much. <laughs> After seeing the boiled night crawler, which it's just an earthworm, um, Billy starts to get cold feet and he thinks about re- backing out. But Tom, being a most excellent second, reminds him about the money and the mini bike, and so he's determined to go through with it. And he eats the worm while Alan watches, looking quite worried. Glug, Billy poked the fork back into his mouth, chewed furiously, gulped, gulped, his eyes crossed, swam, squinched shut. He flapped his arms wild, wildly, and then, opening his eyes, he grinned beatifically up at Tom. Superb, Gaston. <laughs> Tom cut another piece, ketchup, mustarded, salted, peppered, horseradish, and lemoned it, and handed the fork to Billy. Well, said Billy, standing up and wiping his mouth on his napkin. So, we are done with the first curse. No seconds? Mm. (laughs) So, Joe comforts Alan and tells him that there's no way Billy's going to be able to do the same thing for the next 14 days. So, he was acting like like a chicken and they thought he was losing his mind. And mm-hmm. they ran out, and then they started making fun of him. So they were, they were kind of talking back and forth. Billy and and Tom mm-hmm. were talking back and forth, and then they ended up going to like a movie. Mm-hmm. 
and they were talking about what he could do to, uh, he said, all I can think about is, he said, it doesn't really taste bad, but I just can't get the thought of it out of my head before, you know, as I look at it and I'm starting to eat it. And then Tom tells him, just think of a fish. Just think it's a fish. Just say in your mind, fish, 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 fish. And then he starts singing rhymes about right. fish. He's a trout, salmon, flounder, perch. I'll ride my mini back into church. Day, day's tuna, haddock, trout. Wait till you hear the minister shout. Just fish, 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 fish. Shark, haddock, sucker, eel. I'll race my father in his automobile. Eel, flounder, bluegill, shark. We'll race all day till after dark. Billy cheered up. Think how they all stare. I'd rev up the aisle, zip around the front pews, down a side aisle, under the stained glass window. My parents would kill me. <laughs> Reverend Yarder would peer down over the Bible stand. William, he'd cry. William, you take that engine out of here this minute. Yeah, and then they'd come chasing out after us, said Tom. Billy laughed, waving their arms and yelling, and we'd lead them zigzagging around and round. And in and out of the gravestones and monuments in the cemetery, and then roar off down the Sand Gate Road, leaving them draped over tombs, panting and shaking their fists. Hup, hup, yelled Tom, dancing around and boxing the air. <laughs> and that Monday, we'd smuggle it into class, disguised as Raymond Dwelly, because he's so fat, and hide it in the coat closet. And then when Millie Butler said, anything anything at all even something like excuse me or if she even sniffed we dump a whole bottle of ink over her head and run for the coat closet overturning chairs and desks behind us to slow up miss howard she'd come after us fuming and shouting threats and suddenly the door of the coat closet would slam open and out we'd roar on our mini bikes in blood red crash helmets and white jumpsuits our scarves streaming out behind us and we'd roar around and around the classroom while Mrs. Howard knelt among the overturned desks and chairs, sobbing helplessly into her hands, and then room, room out the door and up the hall, thumbing our noses at the monitors, brackety, brackety, brackety up the stairs, stiff arming tacklers into Mr. Simmons' office, up onto his desk, broom, broom, a backfire into his face, and zoom out the window as he topples backward in his chair in the hurricane of quiz papers and report cards and then crunch landing on the driveway we'd roar off down the highway to Bennington and join the Navy so Mrs. Howard and Mr. Simmons and our parents can't punish us how come you don't get this in, into babysitter's <laughs> club <laughs> so is that a big fantasy like thing for you i probably like. surely was i mean <laughs> i probably read that and thought yeah hell yeah <laughs> but yeah that had me laughing yes it's very good <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> uh we go through a few days with alan giving billy a new worm and billy eating it and yeah he's pretty disgusted with himself but it's more the idea of the worm than the actual eating of it but it's fine. He keeps going on and successfully ingesting the worms. And Alan starts growing really worried. And he imagines what his father's going to do to him when he learns that he had placed this bet. And he knows his father will be angered even more should he lose the $50. But it's okay. Because Joe says that he's got it all doped out. It all what? Doped out. I don't know what that means. I know. <laughs> I uh, figured out is what I get from context, okay. but um, got it all doped out. All right. You didn't say that when you were a kid? Mm. <laughs> no. So to throw Billy off and discourage him from eating the worms, um, Joe makes up this fantastic, dramatic as fuck story. And including his father shaking him super hard, his mother wailing and fainting with her tongue out, his sister <laughs> crying, his aunt sobbing and pulling down all the shades in the house, all because they thought he might have eaten a worm. They won't tell him why it's so bad, but he's like, it's just like the time my cousin Lucy got caught in the back seat of her father's <laughs> Chevrolet with the encyclopedia salesman. Nobody could tell me why there was such an uproar. 
Yeah, things like that, I wouldn't have had any idea what they were talking about no, as a kid. but now we're probably talking about statutory <laughs> rape. I don't know, Cousin Lucy might be an adult, yeah. maybe. But anyway. <laughs> uh, but one thing's for sure, it's worse than poison. So, but when they give Billy this information, they really can't contain their laughter. They're trying mm. to pass it off as sneezing. Right. But Tom's like, nah. You're making the whole thing up. This is crap. Um, speaking of crap, was that considered a swear word when you were young? Yeah, you wouldn't have said crap in front of an adult. Right. That's what I thought. You could have said crud. Crud. It's totally different. Yeah. I thought it was a swear word until my fourth grade teacher said it in front of all of us huh. at Catholic school. Uh-huh. And the year after I left, she became principal. Okay. Yeah. She was... Going through this one kid's desk, I think he wasn't there or something. So she was trying to find something or get his homework or something. But it was real messy. And she said something about all this crap in here in front of all of us. And it was like, <laughs> oh, my God. So I figured if Miss Dutil could say it, I could say it. <laughs> I don't recall actually saying it in front of an adult. But I knew I could and have that excuse. Right. <laughs> You had it locked and loaded. I did. Yeah. So Billy says, if Tom is so certain it's not poison, he should eat one. Um, Tom should eat one. But Tom wusses out and makes a break for it. So Billy eats it. It's fine. And later that night, Alan's freaking out even worse about the $50. So much that he calls Joe while Joe's sleeping. Joe's mom is not happy. Yeah, it's like 3 o'clock in the morning or something <laughs> like that. Yeah. It's like really late. And also that night, Billy has worm nightmares and he's grown real concerned when his stomach begins to hurt. And he wonders if Joe and Alan were telling him the truth about the whole poison thing or worse than poison after all. So he goes and wakes up his parents all in a panic and he tells them everything he's done with this whole bet thing. And so his mom is really worried. His father is really not worried. Hmm. <laughs> um, he's like... You- could eat a worm every day for six weeks and be fine. Um, and that's probably just all the condiments making his stomach act up. But his mom's sitting there insisting he call the doctor. He says that's ridiculous. And so they really start to argue and Billy goes back to bed because he's cold. Um, and eventually he hears his dad talking to poison control. And apparently there will be no long range ill effects. Why couldn't his mom have called if she was so worried? The doctor. Because she's like you. Oh, do you think so? (laughs) Okay. I didn't know if that was like a... (laughs) It would be improper for a woman to call a male doctor in the middle of the night. How dare a woman wake up a man in the middle of the night? Well, I mean, I wasn't thinking that. (laughs) But like, you know... A woman, a married woman calling a probably married man, even though it's totally professional. Mm, I don't know. You see it from, that, from that angle, huh? Yeah, I did. Billy's real confident now, and he pushes through eating the next few worms. And he's like, even started... it was It was funny because when his dad was talking to Poison Control, in the book, it was, you know, it was first person from... Billy's point of view. So mm-hmm. you were hearing one side of the conversation, like he was saying worms. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like a few. <laughs> yeah. A bed, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was very really good. <laughs> He's kind of like, yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> um. Oh, so he's starting to get used to the taste and the texture and like. Even the whole idea of eating them. And it's like not stressing them out at all. But that num- worm number nine is freaking huge. Because it turns out Alan glued two together. So <laughs> all the boys get into this huge fight. Tom and Billy saying that the others cheated. And Alan and Joe saying, well, he didn't actually eat it. So no cheating actually happened. Hmm. Which is some kind of reasoning. <laughs> Yeah, so apparently they took two worms and glued them together mm-hmm. and then f- battered and fried it. Right, right. So it And it said it was two feet long. <laughs> Which, I mean, those are some substantial worms yes. as it is. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> this picture he yells, he paints, sorry. Yeah. Of the of whole fighting. argument. Yeah. They argued and yelled, striding here and there about the barn, sprawling against posts, flinging up their arms, kicking walls, banging down on a <laughs> pail or orange crate, and squeezing their heads between their hands. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. And then they all go chase a loose pig. <laughs> So Joe and Alan are really panicking now, and the two of them are about to leave for a couple of days on a fishing trip. So in order to see the bet through, because they can't let Billy skip two days, they enlist Billy's mom, asking her to make sure that Billy eats the worms while they are away. And they assume she's going to refuse and prevent him from eating the worms, but that is not the case at all. She calls up the doctor. Apparently, they had talked to him um, during business hours, I guess, the next day. Because he already he knows about this worm thing. And she's like, yeah, he's still doing it. Hmm. <laughs> Is he going to be okay? And he says, apparently, that like just one a day for the next few days is fine. So then she's all in. She's like, yeah, okay, let's do this. And she gets all the details from the boys and asks why they chose her. She's like, well... This is quite a responsibility. Are you sure I'll be neutral enough? I am his mother. Yeah, we thought of that, said Joe. But we figured, well, you're usually pretty fair. And besides, parents almost never cheat kids if it's just something between kids. They're usually pretty fair until they get into it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that was good. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. But they introduce a couple of new rules when they're talking to her. Also, they say, like, you can't make it into a soup. And you can't, right, you can't and, chop it up. And you can't small. just mash it up. Yeah. It makes Make it, it into in. a hash. You can't yeah, hash yeah, it. Yeah. 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 Which makes sense because you lose the texture and shit that way. So dad's cool too because she just gives it to him um, boiled or fried? Fried that night. Dad's like, damn woman, you can do better than, oh, just fried. Uh, get out <laughs> your cookbooks. <laughs> and so they start going through them together. And she comes up with Alsatian smothered worm. Dredge the worm with seasoned flour sautéed in three tablespoons drippings until browned, covered with slices onions, sliced onions, pour over one cup thick sour cream, cover pot closely, and bake in a slow oven until tender. And apparently it's fucking delicious. <laughs> <laughs> like, so much so that dad wants a bite, but because mom is an excellent referee... She says Billy has to eat it all himself because them's the rules. <laughs> now I think I think immediately before this is when they had slipped in the fact that Billy has is eating worms outside of the contest. Uh-huh. He makes a peanut butter and worm sandwich. That's later. There's two times that it's mentioned in the oh, book that he's okay. eating it outside of outside of the contest. Oh. And, oh. And it okay. seems like this was around the time that it, they slipped that one in at first. Anyway, so for a worm number two that Billy's mom serves, on a silver dish in front of Billy lay an ice cream cake bathed in fruit syrups, peach, cherry, tutti frutti, candied orange, topped with whipped cream sprinkled with jelly beans and almond slivers. And the worm is full inside. Um, and they call it a whiz-bang worm delight. I mean, woman, you are a whiz-bang mom delight. I love you so much. That sounds really dirty. Hey, if you've been enjoying our show, please share it, tweet it, tell your friends and enemies. Word of mouth is the best way for podcasts to grow. And we would just really appreciate it. I know if you're listening, you probably have some bookworm friends from back in the day who would love to reminisce with us. Please consider rating us on Apple Podcasts and subscribing there or at any of your favorite podcast places of choice. Come hang out with us on Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr, YouTube, Pinterest, all at Fighting Over the Card Catalog, and on Twitter at Card Catalog Pod, and me personally at Just Digress. And last but not least, check out our website where you can find all the things I just mentioned. So Alan and Joe return from their fishing trip and 
They decide they need to pull out all the stops now to prevent Billy from winning the bet. So they invite Billy and Tom to go to a Mets game. But then they don't pick up Tom, so he can't remind Billy of the bet. Which is really shitty. Poor Tom sitting there all alone, not getting picked up. So then they fill Billy up with food to distract him at the game and tire him out. So he just completely forgets about the bet. And Alan goes, and it will probably cost him $8 to buy all that food. Uh-huh. Can you imagine paying $8 to buy a ton of food at a game? But that does convert to $44. So well. that sounds like, well, not that much food. But at the last minute, after he's gotten home that night, Billy realizes his mistake. And he gets Tom and Tom's little brother, Pete, to help him find a worm. And then, underneath a streetlight out in front of Alan's house, they set off this, like, siren of Pete's, waking up the entire neighborhood so everyone can bear witness as he eats the worm just before midnight. And they yell the whole time that the reason everyone's been woken up is because of Alan and Joe. And it's actually really funny. (laughs) And Billy bravely eats that worm all by itself. No condiments or anything. So Alan and Joe have to go apologize to the entire neighborhood the next day. And they say, hello, we're Alan Phelps and Joseph O'Hara. We're the reason you were waked up in the middle of the night last night, and we're sorry. You'll be happy to know our parents have punished us. We can't look at television or have any dessert for a month, and our allowances have been taken away for two weeks. We promise that it will never happen again. (laughs) The parents in this are great. Here it is. Found it. The twelfth worm. The okay. So this is right before the twelfth worm. So okay. you think Alan really meant it when he said he'd given up? Asked Billy, turning down the flame under the frying pan. He was cooking a toasted cheese and worm sandwich. Toasted cheese. Got you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You're right. That's disgusting. <laughs> so. The day so he's after- like a little uh, cannibal guy. He's like a. He's not a cannibal. He's not eating people. <laughs> well, like a. Um, I'm thinking of zombie. He's like a little zombie. He's gotten the taste. Mm, mm-hmm. He's gotten the taste for flesh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You're right. Okay, so now they get into a huge, huge fight. The next day after the whole uh, mm. nighttime thing. Um, they call each other bastards and are choking and scratching and throwing mud at each other until Billy actually gets hurt because he takes a rock to the face. And so Billy and Alan's dads are really great about this, actually. They're like, we know this has to do with this bet that y'all made, but we're not going to get involved with that. But you've been friends for far too long. So make it up, make up, and we'll go to Friendly's for ice cream. Yes, Friendly's. Um, so the dads leave the room, let them figure it out, and Billy accuses them of cheating again, and Alan says he would have cheated too if he were losing, and Billy's like, yeah, okay, fair. <laughs> but no more. And he says if he does get to buy the bike, they can all use it. And they all go get milkshakes. Okay, so there was another fight in which they were all throwing punches at each other. And Alan and Joe Joe end up running out of the barn. You know, like one of them leaves and then there's three of them and then three of them punching and kicking and fighting. And then the other one runs out. And then all of a sudden, they figure out that it's just Billy and Tom fighting each other, and they stop. And, and I don't then, remember that at all. And then the guys are yelling at them, laughing at them for having fought each other. I don't remember that at all. Was it in the midst of the fight I just talked about? It may have been. It may have okay. been. Oh, yeah. I like how they were yelling at each other. They were calling each other finks. Yeah. Which reminds me of uh, Harriet's dad. He was calling all his clients finks. Yeah, yeah. Spiffle, whack, thump. Someone's choking, no fair, thwomp, gouge. Mm -hmm. 
Joe crawled off behind a tree, nose bleeding. Womp! He's pulling hair! He's scratching! Twist, twist. Alan crawled weeping behind a bush. Thump, whack, donk. Billy, it's just you and me! Oh, okay, yes. Okay. Where's the others? Did you ever get into a big physical fight like that with friends or a friend? Um, Not with a friend that I can think of. You? Oh, God, no. Did you throw down? No. <laughs> I was in a fight in the eighth grade that lasted for like an hour. A whole hour? Yeah. That's really long. Behind Showman th- Showman's Theater. Of course, where you worked. Not then, I assume. And there were like 40 people standing around watching us. Okay, that sounds like something out of a TV show or a movie. And unfortunately, it was before cell phones, so nobody got had video of it. Did you win? Um, after an hour, there's not really a winner. Oh, sure. Okay. Well, I thought that's why you said, unfortunately, there's no video. Well, I mean, it would, it would be, it would be interesting to look back on Uh, from another perspective. Terrible. You'd be like, these fucking kids, what are you doing? You're so stupid. Yeah, well. Probably. Or not. Maybe you go, oh, great job. (laughs) What was it about? Well, I mean. Okay, so, I mean, I don't know if it gets off on another subject, but it's fine. Um, this guy had gotten a friend of mine drunk and then took advantage of her, and oh, I called him okay. out for it, and he, I can remember having my head, um, like, thrown into a car, <laughs> like, bashed multiple times. I can remember being on his back with his face toward the concrete Uh and me punching him in the back of his head and his face bouncing off of the ground. What the fuck? Yeah. That was... Jesus. You have this, like, idea of a fight when you're a kid. Mm -hmm. Like, you're going to take a swing, you're going to hit him one time really hard, and then Mm. you're going to knock him out. That is not the way it works. No. It is not the way it works. I would And we both had very bad concussions and broken noses. Afterwards. Oh, great job. So Did he at least feel bad or show any remorse? No. No. So, fuck no. him then. I, I've never seen him again. Okay, I was about to ask, are you like <laughs> Facebook friends with him or something? No, nope, <laughs> okay. never seen him again. You scared him out of town. My my, I went home and my Todd actually saw me afterwards. Mm-hmm. And he was like, he got really mad. And he's like, I'm going to go Fuck him up. That's good. Good job, Ty. And I'm like, no, dude. He guy. He got. He was in the same fight I was in. He <laughs> looks the same. I got it covered. I don't need you thank to. Thank you. I don't need you to. Anyway, <laughs> he actually went over to the guy's house, and they were like yelling into his house. It is not oh, Jesus. This guy was an asshole. This guy has been an ass. He was an asshole to me from the time we were like maybe fourth fourth grade. Mm-hmm. First time me and him got in a fight. I was bending over in gym, putting mm-hmm. my shoes on, and he walked up behind me and pushed me face first into the locker. I had wow. absolutely no reason to do it except mm-hmm. that he was a bully. Yeah. And um, I turned around and started throwing fists at him. And the, <laughs> the, <laughs> the uh, you know, I'm one of those guys I hate getting in trouble. Mm-hmm. You, you could just yell at me and I'd start tear, tearing up. But no, yeah. the, the guy actually, <laughs> the coach came in oh, shit. to the locker room and took both of us and gave us spankings with a paddle. <gasps> yeah. Right. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Because anyway. Texas in the 80s. I bet your parents didn't even have to sign permission. No, there was. they didn't even contact my parents. No. Yeah. Because it's still legal to paddle children in school now. Yeah. But your parents have to sign a permission slip, essentially, <laughs> saying that it is okay for the school to spank your children with a paddle. I can't say after that he didn't bully me anymore. That's good. Yeah. So Billy's cooking up the oh. peanut butter. <laughs> The peanut butter and worm sandwich. While Tom is carving his initials into the leg of the kitchen table. What the Mm. fuck, Tom? Fucking kids. So then Billy's sister comes in with this letter for Billy and their mom. 
and it's from the doctor saying he read an article that basically said that like earthworms have been found to lead to like paralysis and pimples but like there's no need for undue harm (laughs) alarm um but billy is indeed very alarmed and he's like freaking out as his dad comes in but his dad reads the letter and cracks open a beer (laughs) Because there's lots of typos and incorrect words that did not fool dear old dad. Words here. that don't even fit in. Yeah. Words that obviously Joe and Alan just made up. But it sounded good to another kid. So for the final worm, worm number 15, Tom is missing because he wouldn't eat lunch. <laughs> but Joe and Alan have brought the worm and they're in very bad moods. But Billy eats this worm with no problem, saying it tastes even tastes better than normal. And Alan's like, we'll get the money tomorrow, and then they leave. So Billy's sitting there reveling in his wind, and then he burps. And I guess it tastes? Or did he, like, actually burp up? No, it tastes. It tasted, like. okay. Like beans, which he hasn't eaten recently. So he figures out that Alan made beans into a worm shape, fried that up to trick him. So he runs after them and accuses them of cheating again. And he gets another worm to actually make it 15. But before he can actually eat it, Alan loses his fucking mind. He locks Billy in a tool closet Mm. in the barn and Joe's like, uh, <laughs> like, what the fuck, my he's, dude? <laughs> he's straight up going to murder him <laughs> to keep from having to pay him $50. Yeah. And Joe's like, okay, he's going to yell in there and his parents are going to hear. And so then Alan's like, okay, so let's drop him down this cistern, <laughs> which is like 15 feet deep. And yeah, <laughs> what the fuck, Alan? <laughs> Jesus. So he's pulling up the boards to open it up to drop Billy down there. (laughs) Billy's dad comes in and he is rightfully pissed the fuck off. Like they all know that they're supposed to stay away from this cistern, obviously, because that's dangerous. (laughs) And so all three of them are in trouble. And Billy's sent up to his room and the others are sent home. And Billy's like, hey. Can I just, like, eat the damn worm first before I go up? But his dad is adamant. And I think it's actually quite admirable Hmm. of the dad. Because he's, like, all in on this bet. But he's like, no, we're not fucking around anymore. I mean, but Billy had nothing to do with that. Billy was forcefully put into a closet. And the other kid was about to murder him. Right. The murdering is a problem. Yes. That's, I that's gotten victim in trouble. blaming. True. <laughs> but I would have gotten in trouble if my friends were doing something that none of us were allowed to do. Right. I would probably get in trouble. Yeah, my dad would have just whooped us all. Mm-hmm. So then Tom comes to the door and he talks to Billy's mom while Pete goes around to Billy's window and he's able to get an Easter basket holding a worm (laughs) up to Billy by tying it to a string and a brick and throwing the brick up there (laughs) so Billy can pull up the basket. It's like, boy, you lucky that didn't (laughs) throw a window. Um, But Alan and Joe run up to see this, and they try to stop it, but it's too late. Billy swallows the worm in front of everybody. So he's got his 15... And Billy is able to purchase the motorbike of his dreams. And he admits that, oh yeah, I have grown to enjoy the taste of worms. And apparently, Alan had to work in a store for Yeah, he said he was going to have to work, I don't know, 20 Saturdays or something like that to make up the money. Yeah, so I don't know. I'm still confused about his whole money sitch. Yeah. Billy when leaned the mini bike against the tree and started down the path through the woods. Tom and Joe were already sitting by a smoldering trash fire on the riverbank, opening their lunches. Where's Alan? At the store? Asked Billy. Flopping down by Tom. Yeah, said Joe. He's still got two weeks to go. 
What have you got for lunch? Asked Tom. Billy looked embarrassed. Worm and egg on rye. The end. The end. <laughs> so good. So there is a movie version of this? Have you seen it? I don't think so. Hmm, okay. Not that I I'm not exactly remember. sure when it came out, but it seems like maybe your kids would have been. I don't know. I may be totally off on that. There are a lot of movies that we need to watch yeah. <laughs> that we've covered here. So what are you reading now? Um, I just finished a book by James A. Mishner. M- Mishner? Mitchner. That's how I think it is. Mm-hmm. Um, called The Fires of Spring. Mm-hmm. This book was 25 hours long. It's pretty long. Yeah, that's more than double the normal. Most of them are around eight hours mm-hmm. or shorter. So I guess triple the size of normal ones. But yeah, I thought it was really good. It was. It basically takes a kid through his formative years and and has a lot of stuff happen to him. Really? Yeah. Oh, sounds so good. I started Dragon Bones. Which is the Unwanted Quest series, book number two. Ah, right. So I'm on book two of this Harry Potter character. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, he's in his second year of this magic school. And a lot of stuff happens. So next week, <laughs> we are reading Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. Which I have read. Yeah. More, not as a kid. Yeah. Yeah. When did you first read it? I probably, it was sometime as a teenager. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, we're rereading the books of your childhood. So you don't have to. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye.